Okay, so the last time we were here, we were, we were working with PouchDB. Uh, we wrapped up that project, I believe. So um, now comes the part about integrating what we've done with the separate pouch files with the MySDCE project. So I've got the the, late, the last version of Pouch, the project that we worked on. And I've also got the latest version of my SDCE. I just put today's date on it, but that was from the last folder we worked on. Um, so Pouch is working uh, with jQuery, which we have in the main project in the WW folder. And all of our HTML and JavaScript code is in the HTML file. But notice also we have then the actual Pouch DB JS library. So I'm going to copy. You need to copy the pouch file from the pouch project. Copy that into the my SDCE folder so that we have its capabilities. I'm going to add pouch there to the my SDCE. Then I'm going to open up um, pouch db.html, what we were working with previously. And I'll open the uh, index HTML of the MySDCE project. So Pouch HTML was all, the, all that we worked with. Very little actual HTML and then a lot of JavaScript. That JavaScript, of course, will eventually go to the, to the Kodika.js file. We'll get to that. But the way Pouch worked is we, we had some HTML. We had that script reference pointing over to the Pouch file. So from the, so from the Pouch HTML file, I'm going to copy line 18, which is the reference to the Pouch JS library. I'm going to copy that. And then in the index HTML file, I'm going to go to the very end of the document where I've got my block of, J or of JavaScript libraries. There's jQuery, jQuery Mobile, Cordova, and then our custom JavaScript code. I'm going to paste this. Um, you know, we don't really need line 327 by now, extra Kodika feature. We don't need that. This is our custom JavaScript code. I'm going to replace line 327 with the, uh, with the pouch file. So this order that is here, we have the jQuery. It's like the foundation for just about everything, especially our project. Then on top of that is jQuery Mobile, so that we have that those designs for rapid, rapidly creating interfaces and other features in of a modern um, mobile project. Then we've got Cordova, which is the ability for all of those APIs, the camera, all that cool stuff. Then we've got Pouch for the database, and then we've got our custom JavaScript. We just left it as the name Kodika from a long time ago, way back in month one of the class. That would be mycustom.js. So we need that. And then what we need is um, a screen where we can actually have the Pouch DB um, input forms and all of that. So just very quickly here, my concept will be, let's put on the home screen We've got the About button. We'll, we'll put a button here for My Classes. We'll save My Classes. The, the concept is that the student is saving a list of their classes and such, notes or whatever. So we'll make a button on the home screen to then open a new window to have that pouch form. So sticking with the index HTML for a moment, backing up to the top over on line 60. We've got the section of div, class, UI grid A. Here's our grid that gives us a 4x4 four four grid, two rows, two columns. And we've got the button there. There's our, there's our about button, line 57. So line 60, let's uh, create then um, a tag so that we will have my classes. This is going to be a uh, 
the usual kind of link. So href to some place. We'll do pound classes. We don't have a classes screen yet, but we will, of course. So clicking a button takes you to classes. That needs a data role. They should all be coming back to us. It's been a while since we've been in this project file. Data roll button, data icon, we'll try out bars. That's just uh, some like lines or bullet points. We have bullets we could, which we could use or bars. And we'll say data transition. I want to do a slide up on this one. We have those varieties of animations that we could tap into. We've used the pop animation for the pop-up of about. Conceptually, it's a different looking screen than other screens. <coughs> so it also has the transition that is different. The other transitions I think we were using were flip. Well, here for classes, I, I could also use the flip transition, which we've used for the other items. But I'm using a slide up so that it stands out. I, the user's going to click on my classes and it's gonna appear on screen to them in a different way than the other screens to hopefully give the users a hint that this is something different than the other screens. So that's our button to load up a screen which doesn't exist yet. This is what we've usually done before. A tag with these variety of data dash elements. Remember Technically, data dash is HTML5, but then role or icon or transition is jQuery mobile. Let's go to the very end of our document. There's about section end. We're going to create a new section for those classes. So, give myself the comment here. Class section start. Class section end. And we could do a little copy and paste. Uh, no, we'll do it manually. We'll create the section. It's got a data role. Section's got a data role. A page. This is a page full of content. An idea of classes. That's what that pound symbol is telling us to go to back on the link at the top. We'll create a header for this. We want something at the top of the screen, so header. Data role. Header. While I'm here, we'll do a data dash add dash back dash btn set to true. We don't need any fancy navigation like we have on the other screens. I want to focus on, here's the place where you're going to save and retrieve your classes. I don't need the rest of the more complex nav bar of having the home screen, the, the PC screen, and the art screen. So I just want a simple back button to take us back to the home screen. That will be a little text there. in a heading 1. So we'll do H1. And we'll say this is uh, my classes. The actual article, which is our main content area, a role of main, and a class of UI dash content. All of that we've done several times before. We need to do it again because now we're going to integrate the PouchDB. HTML content into our main project, my SDCE, so it's got its own section. That's the code is, I save it. I can do a very quick save and run in Chrome. It won't be fully functional, of course, but at the very least here I can save it and run it to see is my icon available, is my icon visible on the home screen, and does the icon work by clicking, and it'll go to this screen, and I should have a back button. Most of the most of the app won't work because by now we've got it as a, a, a as an as an app, not as a website. But a very quick check in Chrome here. My button is right there. Click my classes. I've got a slide up and a back. So if that works at this point, very good. Then what we'll do in just a moment is integrate. Then I'll go back to we'll go back to the pouch file, 
And as I said, there's very little actual HTML that we need to copy over from Pouch. We're going to tweak it a bit. Okay, so from over at, I'm going to go back to the pouch file. We need these elements. We need lines 9 to 15. Uh, we don't need that h1 because we have something in, up in the header. We need the form, of course, and we need the div to show results. So from pouch HTML, it's about lines 9 to 15. Copy those. Those will go at about line 328, which is where the article. That's where the article of the of the classes screen appears. So we brought in the form, inputs, and labels, and the div. We'll copy paste. If I check it out in the browser quickly, it doesn't work yet, of course, but if I refresh that, my classes, so right away it's starting to look nicer already because of jQuery Mobile. There's my input fields. Those elements have been designed nicely. We, we can go look up the jQuery Mobile website and get even more insight on how to style forms more if we would like. This will be fine. What I want to do, however, is I think these buttons are way too big. Save and reset and all of that. Well, we've got jQuery Mobile to make a grid. I want to make a three-column grid and put those three buttons on one row of icons. So that'll be editing the That'll be editing the um, HTML here. We've got input type reset, input type button, input type button. So all three of them, even though I've got them on one line in the HTML, they uh, separate into their own lines. So after those buttons, line 333, uh, we're going to create a div with a class of UI dash grid of the row. I'm going to have three cells. Those divs need to have a, a class attached to them. So class UI block A div UI block B and class UI block C. So those are the three cells of the first row of my grid. And what I want to put into those three cells are the input to reset, the input to save, and the input to show, one on each div. So if I start with the reset, I can select that. Remember, you can drag and drop with a notepad. You can just drag the code there. So I've got the reset button on its own block A. And then we'll put the save BTN btn save 
into block B, or you can arrange these however you want. I'm just putting them in the same order as I had them before. And then the BTN show into C block. A copy of what? Uh, where did I get it? That's in the the pouch. Oh. This is, it should be on the last hand. Yeah, it's all the way. So it puts a copy all the way down. So I'll take a look at what this uh, what this looks like. Doing a quick look in my browser. It's not functional yet. Let's see here. Refresh that. My classes. There we go. So of course, depending on the orientation, depending on the size of the device, the show is getting cut off. Maybe I'll just call it show instead of show classes. Reset, save, show. I can put icons there as well. I'll let you decide how you want to style that, but I'm going to call it Reset, Save, and Show. We had Show Classes, but just call it Show. We've got the div down there, which will display our results. So then the bigger effort is going to be to get the JavaScript into the project. This is just HTML. It's the easiest of all of our languages. Now it's time to get the JavaScript, and it'll work pretty much just copying and pasting from one file to this. But we want to take some effort to massage it into place so that it's properly integrated. Copy and paste will work fine, but we want it to work better than fine. So what I'm saying is, okay, so we've got all of this script section. We're not going to need the, we're not going to need the anonymous function here because that's already in the JavaScript file. We're not going to need the use strict, that's already in the JavaScript file. So we're going to need starting from the, the database variable on line 23 of the pouch db file all the way down to end of our nuke function. 204, so that's almost 200 lines of code for this to work. I'm copying down and not the end of the anonymous function. Of course, that's already there waiting for us in the JS file. I'm copying all of that code, except, like I said, the function and the strict um, declaration. I'm copying all of that. And then I'm going to open from the project, I'm going to open j, uh, kodika.js. JS, of course, JavaScript. In uh, our kodika.js file, we've already got the anonymous function, we've already got the use strict declaration. The place where we're going to paste this into is anywhere inside of the onDeviceReady function. PouchDB needs to run inside of onDeviceReady after the event of DeviceReady has fired. So anywhere here, but I'm going to add it at the end of the onDeviceReady. We scroll down, that's at about line 63. We have the on, end onDeviceReady. Give myself a couple of empty spaces line 65, paste. I just pasted in nearly 200 lines of code. Maybe align my tabs a little bit. I'm 
So the trick is that if you select the whole block, you can tab the whole block at once together. So I selected everything, press tab, or shift tab to go back. A tab will tab you forward, shift tab will tab, tab you backwards. This is just visual, but I tabbed it back so that it's all lined up here. As is, I believe this should work just fine. So I'm going to save all my files. I'm going to be in the taco in the command prompt. And now you need to, you can't just do a simple run from Notepad. It has to now be um, run in an app. So I'm going to run it in the browser. For me, that's a little faster to show you. So I'm going to do taco run browser so that we can see the result in the web browser. That'll be close enough to to real. So taco run browser. Wait for Google Chrome to load up. Remember this Google Chrome is different than the one of simply going to Notepad run Chrome. That one will in from Notepad that'll just treat your project as a website. It's not a website anymore. It hasn't been for a while. A month. Now it's a uh, it's an app, so we have to run it as an app in the browser. When Google Chrome loads up, I want to, if you get any messages about allow storing of files and all of that, yes, allow that. And then I want to hit F12 to bring up my console, and I would recommend to activate the icon up here. If you recall, toggle device toolbar so we can see the project so that it looks a little bit more like on a device and at the top select view it on a, on a, on a device so that it behaves more like a device. I'm going to go with the, next, with the Galaxy S5. That one's probably not so explosive. So I've got my project as before, some of these errors right here. Don't worry about those. Persistent quota. There's my ParchDB output. I'm going to go to my classes. I can't have any classes to show yet because it's a new day, right? Everything got erased. But I will save some data. Class 1, 2, 3, Android 1. Just save some data, real or not, if you want, to test it. Save it. Show it. It should be saving just as before. And if you want it to fully work, to fully believe it, run it on a real device because now it's on a real device. I'm going to pause here a moment. I'm going to put a little data into this just so I have something to work with. Okay, and we should also have the ability to edit. So, oops, I misspelled my name. No problem. I've got the edit pencil. Click on that. I can fix my name. Update. Updated. It's functioning. It's not that pretty yet. That's what we're going to spend a lot of time on. But here's what we've got so far. Let me pause here. Did everyone manage to copy their code over to the right spot? Anyone need a little help?
So if it works up to this point, it works, but it's not that pretty. We're going to spend some time to make it pretty um, because we did this, that the functionality of being able to um, do those updates and all of that is right there. But that would look much nicer if we click the edit pencil and it pops up at that moment that say that says okay ch make your changes you click okay and then the little pop-up disappears we can do that with jQuery mobile we couldn't do it very easily before so that's one thing we'll do what we'll also do is give ourselves better feedback right here if I try to save a class that's empty I get a basic J a basic JavaScript pop-up big ugly JavaScript pop-up that says please enter a valid CRN or whatever and even when I'm trying to delete like an empty class, it again will say error. I would like the jQuery mobile optimized feedback. I could do the native uh, ones from Cordova, uh, but just to show you here's another way to do it. We will do the jQuery mobile pop-ups and, and that sort of thing. So if we go back to our code, we'll go back to our... This needs a little bit of setup. In We, we need the content of, of the pop-ups in the HTML code and then of course we activate it via JavaScript. So if you go back to the index file inside of the uh, classes section what uh, jQuery mobile lets us do is sort of attach pop-ups that will be used in this section then we can call them from JavaScript so the takeaway here is if you're going to show a pop-up in a particular screen, you need to add what we're about to add in that section. If, I, if we add this in like its own section off to the side somewhere, we won't actually quite be able to call it from a section that needs it. So the point of it is, here in the section, at the very end, um, at the very end of the article, still within the actual article, so after our divs, after our div show there, I'll give ourselves a little bit of space there. What we're going to do is then create some, some divs. I'm going to keep this on a single line because it's not going to be a lot of information to show. So a single div. And we're going to say, so we're going to give the user some feedback. Class saved. So every time they save a class, a simple little pop-up, a simple little animated pop-up, that appears that says class save. So some feedback. We weren't really giving them feedback before. The way this works is then this needs a data role of pop-up. One word, lowercase. And at the very least, a class of UI-content. This will give a background to this div. Right now the div is invisible. Divs are invisible. But by adding the UI content class, which we've done for uh, article, for example, it'll give us a background that is consistent. This is all that we need then to create as many pop-ups as we want. Um, one more thing, we need an ID so that we can reference it via the JavaScript. We've got class, we'll add ID 
we'll call this pop um, saved. I will then copy that line and paste it again because then I'm going to create one called class updated. I'll have some text that appears in a nice little pop up window called class updated. It's still going to be data role pop up, class content, ID, pop update. Let's see, pop up for updated content. One more. Class deleted. This will pop up when a class gets deleted. So obviously, ID pop deleted. So that's some feedback that we'll get from saving a class, updating a class, deleting a class. Let's also make some pop ups, some feedback for these uh, couple of errors that we figured out. There is the possible error that we have in the JavaScript about, well, what if a person never types a CRN number? You need to tell them that. And what if a person tries to update or delete a class that doesn't exist? You need to tell them that as well. I'm going to paste the same thing again. This time we will have it say, error, fill all fields. Fill all fields. This one will be the one um, that we will use when we require uh, that the CRN gets filled in. And this will be, I'll call it pop error CRN. One more. And this one will be for an error. possibility is that the person wants to save the class again. They want to save class 1, 2, 3 again. So we'll say error, class already saved. The class already exists. And we'll call this id pop error dupe, duplicate. Dupe, D-U-P, however you want to spell it, duplicate. I'm going to spell the whole thing out. I'm going to forget these, of course, so I'm going to refer back to them once we need them. But uh, these will be pop-ups. Um, we haven't seen these yet. These are different than the pop-ups that we've seen for the About screen. They can be as complex as the About screen, but all I really need them to do is to appear on screen with a little animation to get the user's attention. And I could, in theory, be very complex and not only put text here, but an image, an animated graphic, a movie clip if we wanted. It's just that it's going to be a basic pop-up. We have various things that we can do with it. Again, we can look up on the jQuery mobile site all of the details of it. That's what we need. That's what we need for the starting point, the HTML aspects of it. The way that we make these work is not that complicated. Let's say we want the show classes to display show classes. So, or save class that is. Make sure there's your code and save the HTML file. Data roll pop-up. Back on the JS file in our block of pouch. I'm going to make a big old declaration here for myself. This is optional, line 65, where I'm going to say big obvious note here, pouch db code starts. That might, be, that might be very readable when I'm scanning my hundreds of lines of code. Optional, of course, it's just a, it's just a comment. I can make it look nice because it's it's a comment. Well, we need to find our function save, whatever we called it, function save class. Function save class is where we save the class, where we try to put the class into the database and possible results, possible errors. Well, here's our if of positively 
saving the class. And approximately line 107, we're saying console log. Eventually, we're going to delete all these console log outputs because it's just making our console really cluttered. But then we've got clear the form, whatever they typed, remove that. Um, and what we will do is it's going to get annoying over and over to click show button. We're going to save a class, we're going to click show. Let's just set it so that as soon as we save a class, show the new list of classes, which is our function show classes right here. So not only will we clear the form, let's show the classes. That'll automatically reload the table if we were able to save a class, we'll show the table. And then we'll show a pop-up. We have to reference via the jQuery selector. Uh, we're going to reference the particular div that holds the particular message. So we've got, first of all, to start off with, pop saved. So that'll be pound pop saved. It's a, it's a div with an ID, so pop saved, pound pop saved. And according to the jQuery mobile specification, we have to sort of initialize it for it to behave like a pop-up. So we're saying that element, we're going to use it as a pop-up. copy and paste that line exactly as it is to the next line. Because then on the next line, after initializing it, then we'll actually show it. So we will then say, in quotes here, open. Let's set it as a pop-up, then let's actually make it open. This is how we can open um, a div or other elements. This is how we can show them on screen as an open. Now, I want to do comma and give it a, a, a list of, of options. So this is in a JSON formatted list of options. This is all jQuery mobile stuff. But we've got position 2, and notice capital T on 2, after the quote colon, space, quotes, window. If we go look up on the jQuery mobile specification, we can say, how will we make a pop-up appear? I'm going to set its position to the middle of the window, the middle of the browser window, the middle of the device screen. We have other ones. I don't remember them at the moment. We have other ones that can open at the spot that you clicked. So position to click or, or something, we have to look it up. We can wherever we click on the screen, that's where the pop-up will attach itself. And you can even have it have like a little arrow pointing there. So it's pretty robust. At this point, we can also define a, a an animation, the jQuery mobile animation. So comma quotes transition. Space colon quotes. We will do slide up, capital U. Yes, that is not consistent. We don't use capital when we do data dash transition equals slide up, but we do it here apparently. This is a JSON object, right? Key value, comma. Key value, no comma. It's the last one. So we're feeding in options to the open. Uh, argument of the pop-up method to that object to, to see what that is, and then we'll add some more to the other ones. I'm going to save my code. I'm going to run it in Taco. We have to run it in Taco now. I'm going to save a class. What should happen is that the table automatically populates itself because we've added the function. And then also, more interestingly perhaps, we get a little simple animated pop-up that will slide into view in just a moment. That'll slide into view with the feedback of what we wrote in that div. 
comes if you're getting this broken screen here that's our splash screen don't worry about it anyway my classes I'm just gonna save a gibberish class click save populated automatically shown it was there I found a little quirk that the first once or twice that you do it it doesn't actually animate but the second or third time it does and if I save another class save that you see one more save that's what I'm saying we get a we get a some sort of pop-up that pops up to let you know you saved I've got new stuff in my database well if I try to uh, save an empty input I want a pop-up I've got a pop-up waiting if I'm trying to save a class that already exists if I try to save class 1 2 3 again in my case save I want a pop-up for that I've got those pop-ups waiting so it's the exact same concept this concept what's the div that holds your message initialize it as a pop-up then pop-up that pop-up with some options I'm going to copy that whole block right there because that's already completed code. I just need to change the particular div that I need to show with the message. So we can deal with these errors right here. Error 409, CRN already exists. Error, error for 412 enter a valid CRN. So we've got our error when well, we've got a duplicate CRN. Uh, maybe I'll do that one first. So I'll paste in that again. We've got pop error. CRN. And then for case 409, paste that in also, and that's our error dupe. Got trying to duplicate. You no longer need those alerts. You can delete them or comment them out. I'll comment them for the moment. We don't need those alerts because those are plain old JavaScript alerts. Um, there's some jQuery mobile alerts or pop-ups. We never created an alert for the default case. We can do that later. So now with case 409 and 412, I have those errors. Run it in taco. Okay, so with that update, my classes, I'm going to try to save a class with no inputs. Save error, fill all fields. Okay, so then if I try to save a class that already exists, class 1, 2, 3, save error, class already saved. I'm going to show, I'm trying to save class 1, 2, 3, 3. Save, get the pop up class saved. So 
there's there's those pop-ups for error we have the pop-up um, for updating a class for deleting a class same thing I'm going to copy those lines that work and I need to find my function delete class at about line 174 I've got function delete class so I've got Uh, get the class in question. If we did get that class, result uh, is that it got deleted. So if it got deleted, we've got a uh, result there, we got remove, we got result there. Okay, so we've got function show classes. That's the result of actually deleting. After, after doing function show classes, I'll paste in the pop-up creator. We had their pop updated. That'll display our div to let the user know you've updated a class. I'm oh, sorry, not updated, deleted. We're dealing with deleted, right? Uh, yeah, pop deleted. This is function delete, pop deleted. We didn't, we didn't make an error for this case. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll make one pretty easily. Um, we need some error message for here. We didn't make error messages for trying to delete a class that doesn't exist. So if I go back to my HTML, I have the pop-up for all of these. Fill all fields, class already saved. OK, I need to uh, make a div for class does not exist. I'm going to copy one of those. Div data role pop up UI content pop error. I don't know, we'll call it error null, as in it doesn't exist. Error class does not exist. So we have a, a sixth possible um, error message there. Make sure you've got the unique ID, the error null. And on the JavaScript, I can borrow this code of deleting and paste it into, I guess to be safe we should put it into both of these errors. We've got this error, if we get all the way as, uh, into the remove, most likely you won't. You'll get the error right away that you can't delete it, which would be this else down here. We've got two error conditions. I don't think you'll ever get down to this one, but I'll, I'll put this error pop up right there and down here, and comment out those alerts. So this error class does not exist. I'll replace that with pop error null. And that exact block for this other error that could have happened from removing the class exact same code, exact same pop-up. This can be tested, of course, if you 
try if you press the button to delete a class which doesn't exist you should get that error message there class does not exist and then if you successfully de delete a class it should give you the pop-up that says class deleted so I will check mine In a little bit, we will use this same mechanism of making these pop-ups to get a little fancier when we edit the class. We, um, we want those fields that are waiting for us to appear when we want them to appear. So we will do them via the pop-ups. So save class. If I try, if I do show class, and I try to delete uh, class one one one, which doesn't exist, delete class. Error. Class does not exist. Okay. If I then try to delete a class that does exist, class worked. Delete class. Class deleted. And my table refreshes. Try to delete an empty class. Class does not exist. You can make a further, spe more specific error message there saying, please enter a class to delete. You get the idea, you can probably figure that out. But what I want to do, we'll take a break and then to make sure we're all at this point, because what comes next is going to be honestly a little difficult. What we need to do is get this to open up dynamically whenever we click one of these pencils. I want to click a pencil, pop up, and I want these fields to appear in the pop up. It will require us to rewrite a little bit of our HTML and a little bit of our JavaScript as well. Um, right after the break. So if you're up to this point, very good. If not, call me over at 718. We'll be back at 728. And we'll proceed.